Greetings, Basketeers! Josh Fosgreen here uh, with one of my favorite Jocko licks. I've been wanting to do some Jocko stuff with you guys, and I thought this was as good a place to start as any. This is just a little lick you can start playing with. Um, it's a great right hand workout, and it works uh, in a few different musical contexts. You can hear it on Weather Report's River People is the name of the track, uh, but also you can hear it on <laughs> almost every live Jocko record, I think. He really loved to whip this out live, it seems, on the, uh, the Live in New York albums. You can hear a lot of it. So anyway, this is just a cool little Jocko lick. Fits in the uh, minor pentatonic scale and also works over dominant seven sus chords, minor seven chords, etc. And uh, we're going to play with messing around with the notes a little bit later. But first, let's get this under our fingers. To do that, you'll need to download the PDF by clicking on this. It's free. You just click on that and you get to look at it. And that's that. And um, it's got all the notes written out in sheet music and tablature, so you can see what string I played the stuff on. And uh, also right hand fingerings, suggested right hand fingerings, because really this is a uh, workout for the right hand, not so much for the left hand. So let's actually go through this sucker uh, note by note. So again, all we're looking at here is four notes of the E minor pentatonic scale. Root, fourth, fifth, minor seventh, and the octave is just a repeat of the root. So that's our basic note vocabulary. So I'm saying minor pentatonic because that's sort of where you'd imagine the notes are pulled from, but there's not actually a minor third in here, which would be the fifth note of the minor pentatonic scale. So because of that, this is a sort of ambiguous line that could work uh, over a chord with a minor third or a chord with a major third, like a dominant seven or a dominant seven sus. Um, because it's kind of ambiguous. All you have is just perfect perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor seventh, which you know could be a dominant sound or a minor sound, and the octave. So uh, because of that, it's uh, you can use it when you want some ambiguity, and you can use it in a variety of places without having to change any of the notes. So let's talk through this uh, just for the left hand, and then we'll worry about the specific right hand fingering. So we're just going two E's, two E's, down to the four, bar across to the flat seven. I'm doing a lot of first finger barring here because we've got E, A, and D all on the seventh fret. So it wouldn't make sense to jump that finger around with the fingertip. So what I'm doing is I'm using my fingertip on the A string seventh fret and then just kind of barring across, I'm doing a little sliding around but barring some of the pressure across to a different part of my finger. So I can get the E, the A, or the D just by kind of rotating uh, the pressure around on the first finger without actually moving the fingertip around, which just wouldn't work at this tempo that we're shooting for. So uh, that in mind, first finger, E, pinky. And again, here I'm not doing one finger per fret, which would, if I were doing that, I would use my third finger on the high E. But everything is within a three fret box, so there's no sense in stretching your hand out further than that. It just wastes energy because to have your hand stretched out like this requires more muscle tension than having your hand like this. So because everything's in here, I'm just going index finger on the seventh fret, pinky on the ninth fret. Actually, the way I'm choosing to finger this, I'm really just using rock, uh, my index and pinky. So E, E, A, D, B with the pinky, E, B, E. And then it just repeats that same pattern, E, A, D, B, E, B, E, and same thing again. So it's pretty easy with the left hand. It's, you know, it's a little bit of a uh, tongue finger twister, kind of like the finger equivalent of a tongue twister at first. Just, just like when you, uh, if you're kind of just starting out and you're trying to learn the bass line to Billie Jean. Kind of a similar thing where you're just bouncing around four notes 
Uh, but getting them in the right order at first is a little bit like uh, <laughs> hard. Um, but once you get that, basically the, the left hand is pretty easy here. The right hand is what's tricky, and what I've written in the PDF is what works for me as the best fingering to be able to play this fast. Because um, if you listen to Jocko, especially on the live records, he liked to play this fast. So if you want to be able to keep up with that, you need a good right hand fingering. So what I find is that while I'm in general a fan of raking, and I do it a lot, um, which we've talked about that in the past, raking is just when you use one finger to do a down to a lower string pluck rather than continuing your strict alternating. I'm only doing a, one rake in a very specific place um, and then doing it on the repetitions throughout the lick. So let me explain what I mean. So basically we're alternating through this lick. So I'm going one, two, one, two, one, two. That's the first spot where I really don't rake because uh, I'm going from the G string down to the D string here from that last E to the A but I'm keeping the alternating just because it seems to work better. So here we, let me just talk you through it. One, two, one, two, one, two. Now here's the rake, two, two. Now we're back to alternating. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, two, two. So there's that same rake again. Every time we do that D, B, E, that's where I'm getting a rake in there. And besides that, it's all alternating. a slow tempo for you and we'll do a close-up on the right hand just so you can see what's going on. Here we go. One, two, three, four. of this together at 100 BPM. This is a little slower than the intro, uh, but a little faster than the uh, than the example you just heard. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So it'll take some time to work out this right hand fingering, but once you have that going, just remember to breathe, take some tension out of your shoulders, Try to keep your <laughs> general musculature as relaxed as possible because uh, you'll tend to tense up when you try to play fast, which is not good. You don't want to do that. Um, so the last thing I want to uh, play with with you today with this lick is taking the same arrangement of how many notes and plucks per string, but changing some of the notes around so that we can use this lick that we're practicing in some different contexts. Um, like, for example, rather than... I'm gonna turn that, I'm gonna turn the octave into a major seventh, I'm gonna turn the minor seventh into a major sixth, and I'm gonna turn the perfect fourth into a major third. And now I've got something I could use over a major seven chord. Root, major seven, major third, major sixth, perfect fifth. For example, and I've still got the same number of plucks per string and the same basic skeletal structure, which is a phrase I like to use a lot in my videos. I'm sure many of you have noticed by now. Um, but so we're taking the, uh, the basic idea, stripping it of its specific tonality and plugging another one in there. It could also go uh, root, ninth, fifth, major seventh, sixth. So basically our original lick is, is five notes, root, fourth, fifth, seventh octave. So I'm just plugging some different notes into the fourth, fifth, seventh octave slots. So in this case, fourth is going up to fifth, fifth is going up to sixth, minor seventh going up to major seventh, and octave going up to ninth. So there's a couple options you could use on major seven chords. So just play around sticking. It doesn't even have to be particularly tonal. <laughs> uh, just, just mess around. Um, this is something I try to do anytime I learn a lick is just tweak a thing or two and you end up exploring some fresh territory off of the thing you're already practicing. Because then you could use the same right hand fingering you put all that work into 
and get you know five or six or ten different looks out of it depending on how creative you are with the notes um so that's something you can play with you could also play with uh not necessarily starting on the root like we could stay in the key of e and uh take our leg up start on a g sharp play the same lick we were playing starting on e but now if we analyze in the key of e we're going third third sixth ninth major seventh I'm playing the E on the bottom so you can hear how that sounds. So then you're getting kind of a cool minor pentatonic sus thing superimposed onto the E, uh, E major sound. Um, you could do that with a, a, you do it in D sharp. Playing D sharp minor pentatonic over E major seven sharp eleven is a cool thing to do. Anyway, um, so so basically, I'm just taking the lick we were playing, taking it down a half step. Now I'm going in, still analyzing from the key of E major seven, major seven again, major third, major sixth, sharp eleven. Sounds better up an octave. So you don't have to worry about all the specifics that I just blah 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 through, but um, the idea is to take the basic and get your own ideas out of it so you don't just have a Jocko imitation lick. You can also expand upon it, and um, I think that that's how music develops over time is people taking things they like and expanding on them because uh, there's not really anything new under the sun. We're all building on what the great bass pioneers have done in the past. So it's great to learn the stuff as they played it and also to see how you can put your own spin on it. Um, and so hopefully you'll play with that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you dig this lick as much as I do. Uh, please comment if you'd like more Jocko Licks videos. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I try not to focus too much on licks because I'm really more about learning scales and structures that you can use to improvise on your own. But also it's cool to learn phrases that uh, were played by people who you really musically admire. Um, so comment if you'd like more Jocko Licks and we can do that and you know try to inject some theory and some thoughts on uh, creativity in there as always because I can't just make a five minute video on a lick apparently I just always have to try to throw some more uh, interesting stuff at you for your consideration so hopefully you guys appreciate that uh, it makes these videos a little bit longer but hopefully it's worth it in the long run Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe if this is your first video. I come up with new bass lessons on a fairly weekly baseless, base, basis, a baseless basis for bassists. Uh, <laughs> and uh, working on a new book, as I've said, it'll be out this year sometime. And in the meantime, Beastly Scales and Arpeggios is available for uh, intrepid souls who want to learn how to move around the whole neck uh, in any of the commonly used major modes and uh yeah i'll be back at you guys next week thank you for watching party on dudes <laughs>